Well, welcome and thank you for joining me here on this Thursday. Hope everybody's had a great week so far. Hurricane Melissa still out there causing trouble. We're going to see conditions heading downhill fast tonight in Bermuda as Category 2 storm Melissa tracks to the north and west of the island overnight tonight. After that, the storm will lose tropical characteristics and we will finally quiet things down in the tropics. But unsettled weather across the United States is going to start to uh, tick up as we head into November with more cold outbreaks and more unsettled weather. We're going to talk about all that in the video here. Uh, let's take a look first at the tropics and a look from tropical tidbits at our satellite. Still, we've got Melissa growing in size as she moves northeast at a much quicker rate today uh, and will be passing just to the northwest of Bermuda during the overnight hours tonight. We also have a big storm system moving through the Appalachians, our first snowfall of the season in some of the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee early in the morning today. Lightning strikes earlier on in central Pennsylvania. So a very dynamic storm, but one that is protecting the East Coast from Melissa, which is going to continue to move up uh, to the Northeast and become post-tropical by the end of the week. Uh, aside from that, fairly quiet in the tropics. We're heading towards November, and while the season's not complete, um, majority of the storms have now completed. We do have some tropical moisture to keep an eye on. That is going to move into the Windward Islands and into the Southern Caribbean. There's also thunderstorm activity still in place over the Southwestern Caribbean. And neither of these shows any signs of development for the time being, but uh, certainly could bring some heavy rainfall to these areas. And as we get into the weekend, unfortunately, some of this moisture is going to bring more rainfall into the storm impacted areas of Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti, where certainly rain is not necessary at this time and certainly is not welcome but fortunately we're not expecting an extreme amount of rain out of this next wave of rain nothing tropical uh just uh, scattered showers and storms like you might expect uh, most of the tropical activity as we head into november is expected to be in the western pacific in fact we could have a couple of systems uh to monitor uh, moving into the philippines and eventually into southeastern asia in particular in vietnam we're going to talk about those in upcoming videos but today we're going to focus on Melissa. Here's the water vapor image, and you can see the storm is getting sheared from the southwest. There's dry air from our trough approaching uh, into the Bahamas, and you can see that dry air bringing wind shear into the southwestern portion of the storm. It is fighting it off due to the fact that we have warm uh, ocean water still in place, but eventually that warm water uh, source is going to run out, and the storm will begin to weaken as we get into the night tonight, and we will start dropping categories overnight tonight. Uh, but a larger storm, one that's going to bring some dangerous surf up the eastern seaboard, which is the last thing some folks want to hear because we've had a lot of impacts on the east coast. Maybe not a hurricane strike, but we've had a lot of coastal lows. We've had large storms come up the east coast or at least go offshore and uh, cause issues, especially in the Outer Banks, coastal Virginia and Maryland. So another big one here as far as the wave action goes. Now, here's a look at the visible satellite. You can see Bermuda on the map in pink. Uh, we're not going to see a ton of rain from this system. It's mostly a high wave surge and uh, wind storm for the island of Bermuda. Now, this is a resilient island. This is not going to be uh, the worst case scenario for Bermuda. Nothing like what we saw uh, even in uh, Cuba uh, yesterday morning. Uh, it'll blow through fairly quickly, but we are going to see conditions going downhill pretty quickly this evening. And at their worst during the overnight hours, uh, we should see things begin to improve during the daylight hours on Friday as the storm bypasses to the north and west. Uh, the current track does take the storm uh, to the west of the island. Uh, pressures uh, have dropped a little bit earlier in the day and are starting to rise. They're in the higher 960s, indicating that the storm is not really weakening just yet. In fact, uh, we are seeing a 964 millibar estimated reading. So the storm is not nearly as powerful as it was a few days ago in the Caribbean Sea, but still a 964 millibar hurricane uh, is a powerful system. I guess we're just sensitive to the fact that we've had three Category 5, so 964 doesn't really turn too many heads. But that is a powerful storm system, so let's at least take it seriously. Uh, as of 2 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Bermuda time, the storm moving northeast at 30 miles per hour, so... Uh, running along very quickly now, the location 29 degrees north and 70 degrees west, 70.9 degrees west. Winds are 105 miles per hour. Hurricane warning remains in effect for the island of Bermuda. And you can see the area in red and the area in orange where the uh, hurricane and tropical storm force winds continues to grow somewhat. 
and right now is expected to go to the west of Bermuda, but uh, it will expand some more as it advances more to the north and east. Here's the official forecast track, and we are going to move into some cooler water over time, so weakening should start tonight as the storm bypasses Bermuda. Then after that, the storm will be a Category 1. As we get into the morning hours tomorrow, it should weaken down to about 80 miles per hour. It will not really look like a hurricane by the time we get to this time tomorrow afternoon and especially tomorrow night. At that point, we're starting to see it merge uh, with the front to its west. We're moving into much cooler water off of uh, Atlantic Canada, and uh, we're losing tropical characteristics. So it will not look like a hurricane. Uh, most of those strong winds are going to be well offshore, but there will be some impact to the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland, and there will be some rain as well moving through very quickly as we get to late Friday night and Saturday uh, the Hurricane Center for Continuity keeps the storm moving through the northern Atlantic and towards Iceland at that point, though, uh, just a remnant low pressure system. Here's a closer look from Zoom Earth, and you can see the track has shifted a little bit more to the west. I would say that's better news for Bermuda. It's not great news in that it is still far enough or close enough so that the eastern side could bring hurricane conditions to Bermuda. But at this point, I think the expectation is that sustained hurricane force winds will probably remain to the west of the island and just offshore. It'll be more likely higher end tropical storm force winds with gusts to hurricane force. But again, because this cone of uncertainty does grow with time, if it does still follow the eastern portion of this or jog to the right, a wobble to the right that could bring a period of some stronger wind onto the island more than likely during the overnight hours after that uh, we will see uh, the storm very quickly racing northeastward towards C cape race newfoundland and uh, that will likely occur uh, as we get into the late evening hours on friday uh, most of those sustained winds are going to be in gusts at that point which i know doesn't really make sense you can see the water temperatures uh, from this graphic from cyclonicwx.com. Once we get into the green colors, we're losing that fuel for hurricane intensity. And our latest hurricane model intensity forecast does show a drop off to category one late tonight or early in the day on Friday, and then gradually weakening beyond that. So here's a look at the structure of the storm. And you can see uh, still growing on the eastern and southeastern side, not so much on the western side. And the reason why is with the wind shear, with the dry air to the west of the system, and with this low pressure system moving through the interior of the northeast, um, there's a point where the storm is somewhat restricted from growing more to the west. And in fact, it's kind of like a double-barreled system where you've got this low pressure jumping over to the main seacoast on Friday morning, and that's going to restrict this storm to more the southeastern side. So for Bermuda, this is not the greatest news for you in that the storm is uh, mainly growing on the eastern side, not so much the western side, but of course, better news for the U.S. Uh, but that's important as well for Newfoundland. By the time we get to late Friday night and Saturday morning, most of the strong winds remain off the coast. So even if the low tracks over the island, we are probably going to see the worst wind staying well offshore. Even though the pressure is falling, again, it's not really going to be tropical at this point. And I'm going to get back to Newfoundland because this isn't the only storm we're tracking. Next week, there'll be another one in a moment. I'll talk about that. Here's the expected satellite image, and you can see how stretched out the storm is expected to look. And, and you see kind of two separate circulations, one here in the Great Lakes, and uh, the frontal boundary uh, looks kind of like this. And it's just going to basically slingshot the system northeast. So you've got a low here, you've got a low here, and the two aren't going to merge. And this one's not going to get pulled into this. It's moving out too far ahead of uh, our frontal boundary. What's eventually going to happen is because of the shear uh, with this system, we're going to see the low pressure portion of Melissa actually kind of split off. All the thunderstorms get advanced to the east, kind of getting picked up by our trough. And uh, the pressure gradients actually kind of more directed in this direction towards Atlantic Canada. Kind of a weird deformation zone, but uh, nonetheless, uh, just something that you can kind of geek out over if you really wanted to. But you can see there is a circulation center later tomorrow night, but uh, it just does not look tropical. It doesn't really even look like uh, something that may have been a hurricane at any point. Uh, here's a look at ex uh, expected wind gusts on the island of Bermuda. You're going to see here at about 8 to 9 o'clock tonight, they are starting to pick up close to tropical storm force. And then late this evening, we see winds very quickly ramping up. And overnight, gusts are expected to climb past 70 miles per hour. And Hamilton, the Europeans got a max gust of 77 miles per hour just after midnight tonight. 
And uh, that continues into the overnight. I'm actually going to go break it down here more hour by hour so you can see that. Uh, but you can see here this afternoon and early evening, we're below hurricane force and later in the evening, climbing through the tropical storm forces into the 50s and 60s and then up into the 70s and maybe even approaching 80 miles per hour on the western and northwestern portion of the island. These are when the peak winds are expected to hit. So 1 a.m. Eastern time, 1 to 2 o'clock Bermuda time, and then still strong winds uh, through about 5 o'clock. But this system is moving off very quickly. There's actually going to be a little bit of a second push of strong wind out of the northwest um, as our front swings through behind Melissa. Uh, and uh, not really a sting jet, but just one more round of strong winds, even though it'll be a lot drier at that point. And then things are just characteris characteristically windy by Friday morning, but quite a bit drier at that point. Uh, looking up into Atlantic Canada, again, I talked about the strongest winds uh, staying offshore. That seems to be the case with the latest European, uh, which does show uh, wind gusts over 160 kilometers per hour late Friday night, early Saturday morning. But that remains a couple hundred miles offshore. Even if the low tracks over the peninsula, I'm expecting the strongest winds are going to find a way to remain offshore. And that's the hope at this point. Now, there's another storm that's going to come up and really get its act together. And uh, the timeline on that is looking like Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. That one could have stronger winds with it. It's actually going to have some more pressure uh, deeping falls um, compared to what we're seeing with Melissa. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here in the upcoming video. Uh, looking at the United States, let's take a step back here. Um, we are uh, going to enjoy some quieter weather overall across most of the country today into tomorrow, the exception being in the Northeast and another big storm getting ready to move into the Northwest. But things are about to turn unsettled again as we get later on into the weekend. If we look at the GFS model, uh, you see a fairly quiet Friday night. Yes, there's still going to be some cold wind, some wraparound rain and mountain snow showers for Friday night. Uh, but just a nice, cool fall night across much of the eastern and southern United States and a nip in the air across the upper Midwest. Another storm, though, impacting the Pacific Northwest with heavy mountain snows across the British Columbian mountain ranges here Friday night and Saturday morning. And the system that drops down from the upper Midwest is going to try to pick up a little bit of Gulf moisture later on in the weekend. This is not a severe weather setup at this point, um, but it is going to pick some moisture up. And we could see an area of low pressure try to form in the eastern Gulf. Now, it's not going to be tropical. It doesn't have a ton of moisture with it. Uh, but what could happen is we've got a little bit of cold air that gets stuck down in here. And we just see that get wedged into the southern Appalachians. And late Sunday night, Monday morning, don't be completely shocked if we start to see some higher elevation snow once again in the Smokies, uh, maybe near or just outside of Boone, North Carolina, or maybe over towards Mount LeConte. Uh, Clingman's Dome in those areas. Uh, however, uh, the bigger impact right now looks to be just off the coast of the Carolinas, where we could see a quickly deepening area of low pressure. And uh, Monday morning into Monday afternoon, we could see yet more impacts coming to the Outer Banks and coastal Virginia. Uh, maybe more houses getting impacted on the Outer Banks uh, because this storm could wind up very quickly and deepen very quickly as it moves off to the north and east. Uh, then high pressure builds in, and the majority of next week actually looks great across most of the United States. We will have a clipper that comes through the northeast. We have another big storm in the west coast area Wednesday and Thursday. That's going to bring uh, heavier rain farther down the California coast where flooding could be a problem. He heavy mountain snow could be uh, finally getting the ski season kicked off in northern California Wednesday and Thursday. And then we start to turn into a more active pattern heading towards next weekend. Speaking of snow, we did find that snow fell on Mount LeConte. As we get into the night tonight, some of the West Virginia mountains are going to pick up a little bit of snow, maybe a few inches. I know the, the NAM loves to spit out more, eight inches of snow. Probably not going to see that much, but the ridge tops could see a few inches. We could even see some light snowfall across the Laurel Highlands here of southwestern Pennsylvania during the uh, next 24 hours. Not a big deal at this point, but it'll be interesting to watch. Even in the mountains um, to the west of Boone, and uh, to the northwest of Jefferson, North Carolina, just across towards Mount Rogers, uh, we could see a little bit of snow accumulation during the overnight hours tonight. Uh, the first of what could be several early season snowfalls from what I'm looking at here. Uh, but I did want to backtrack and talk about that low off the East Coast because the European AI is really cranking this thing up early next week. This is Monday afternoon. And take a look at how quickly it deepens and interacts with a trough 
uh, over Labrador in Canada. This is Tuesday. We have a 987 millibar low. And then take a look at Tuesday afternoon, and we have a 951 millibar low moving through uh, the Avalon Peninsula and Cape Race in Newfoundland. Uh, so right now, as it stands, and it's not just the AI showing it, the GFS and the Canadian also agree, uh, the storm that follows Melissa could have stronger wind and stronger pressure with it than what Melissa is uh, providing as it passes by Friday night. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that for you. Um, the good news for the tropics at this point, I don't see any major threats Heading into November, there's a minor chance that we could see something a lower end develop towards the beginning to really the middle of November. But looking at the European subseasonal forecast, uh, the opportunity for above average um, climate, at least above average tropical activity is looking pretty low. In fact, these areas uh, that are in beige, the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic, uh, despite some rising air coming across are both indicating below average tropical activity. So maybe one more storm tries to pop up, but right now the odds are sort of against it. Um, you can see uh, the European ensembles, a couple of ensembles like the GFS try to maybe spin up something next week uh, just to the east of Nicaragua, but really the support on our models is extremely low for something to form. Um, certainly heavy rain can happen in Central America and the Western Caribbean, uh, but right now, I think the Gulf is shut down for the rest of the year. It would have to be the Western Caribbean. We could still see some heavier rain moving through the Lesser Antilles. And then there's a there's a slim chance that something in the subtropical Atlantic tries to get named, maybe some kind of a low pressure system that tries to break off from a front or something. But we're pretty much done at this point. Maybe one more storm. But I think Melissa just kind of sucked the life out of the tropics. And I'd be shocked if we saw something more. Next area to watch is going to be the Philippines and the uh, western portion of the Pacific. As I pull that up for you here really quickly, uh, just to give you an idea of what's going to be happening next, uh, you can see that there are probabilities for at least a fairly decent storm moving towards the Philippines next Monday night, Tuesday and Wednesday and then eventually towards Vietnam and maybe another one behind it towards next weekend. I haven't had much time to really take a look at that just yet, but we'll take a look at it in next week's videos. I'm going to take tomorrow off. I may take the weekend off at this point um, just to kind of catch up with my family, but I really appreciate everybody's time today. I hope you all have a great Thursday and great weekend. And uh, if you have not yet subscribed, I urge you to do so. As always, I want to end my video with a word of Christian encouragement because I am a Christian. I give all the honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, you can say that's evangelism by, by bringing to light God's good word. Um, but it is what it is. God has called me to do this. Acts 13, 47, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Uh, the Lord has commanded those of us who have made the choice to follow him and to trust in Jesus Christ as our savior to not hold back, to not keep that to ourselves, but to share it with others. This is an idea that has been given to me for a while that I, you know, somebody, somebody opened the door for me to follow Jesus and to have some faith in eternal life and eternal salvation and to have my sins uh, washed away and to be given mercy. And I just can't hold that back from others. It wouldn't be fair. So I really pray that you believe what I believe, but you're still welcome to come here. Even if you don't, um, I will not judge you. That is not my role. Um, my goal though, is to please God. And I truly believe with my relationship in God through Jesus Christ, that is to share the good news with folks like you. I truly believe you were brought to me here today for a reason. And if you're a subscriber and you've been watching for a while, there's a reason you continue to come back. Uh, I'm not the answer. Um, I am just a messenger from God. God is the answer. I hope you all have a great Thursday night. And thank you so much for joining me here today. See you soon.